Welcome everyone to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're once again joined by Darren Siegel, the product specialist and lead IT engineer at SpecOps Software. Darren, welcome back. Thanks for having me again. So we we just spoke back in December, and I want to make sure to tell folks to definitely go check out that 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 video uh, that we did really recently. Uh, but for folks who are watching right now who maybe didn't see that video yet, if you could give a quick overview of SpecOps software. Yeah, uh, SpecOps is a uh, company that provides password management solutions to um, to other businesses, small, medium enterprise. Um, we offer ways to help you strengthen your password policies uh, within your environment, uh, self-service password reset tools, um, and a number of other solutions in the uh, password management space. And one of the topics I wanted to circle back with you on and cover today was uh, the idea of password reuse. Uh, can you provide some details around that? Yeah, and it's, it's really a natural transition from our last subject, which was just about what makes for a good password. Uh, password reuse is just another facet of the same problem, which is end user behavior, really natural end user behavior. When they're asked to create passwords across all sorts of different systems, we want them to be longer passwords. We want them to follow all of these rules. And it's really a natural you know, conclusion for an end user reach where they're not going to manage this unless they just use the same password or a variation of the same password across multiple systems. Um, the problem with that, of course, is if you're using the same password everywhere, you know, that password get leaked, gets leaked in one place. Um, now an attacker has a password, at the very least a base term in that password that they can use to start poking at all of the other accounts that you have on all those other different systems. So we really want to find a way to get users to not only use those good passwords that we talked about, but to choose unique passwords for all of the different systems that they access throughout their day. Yeah, and, and you know, 2023 security is as big, if not bigger than what we, you know, what we talked about in 2022 and everything that's happened there. Uh, you know, you kind of mentioned it, but like password reuse uh, in that vein of, uh, you know, security problems. Obviously, this is a, a huge, uh, you know, area in, in for companies as well as basically from end users and uh, that it creates a security vulnerability for the company. Right. Absolutely. I mean, password based attacks are are prevalent as ever, um, if not more so. And again, we talked about a lot of that in the last time we spoke, so I won't dwell on it too much. But yeah, if you know, we know passwords get leaked, we see these data breaches coming out left and right. And it, you know, again, you know, if I might not get your password to the system that I want to attack, but if I got a password to some system, that gives me a really nice starting point as a as a bad actor to try to hit some other systems and uh, and find my way in. So, you know, speaking of this problem, are, are there any suggestions that you have uh, for organizations to help them and end users really break the cycle of password reuse? Yeah, absolutely. The tools are out there today. Um, first and foremost, uh, we always talk about implementation of a password manager. Uh, essentially, this is a tool that allows users to store all of their passwords in a secure vault. Um, that vault is protected itself by a very strong password, ideally a multi-factor option on top of that. Um, but you want, you know, the problem is caused by users remembering different passwords. The password manager takes care of that problem. They can store all of their passwords in this one vault. Uh, they can even get to the point of using completely randomly generated passwords through that password manager solution uh, so that every time they touch a different system, it is a different, strong, ideally randomized password. So, you know, yeah, so the user, you know, if an attacker gets that password, it's still a problem for sure, but it's not the same problem as it would be as if that user was using that same compromised password across all those different systems. Password manager makes it very easy for an end user to get away from that behavior. Uh, so that's definitely bullet point one, password manager. But I also mentioned that password vault, it's secured itself by a password. In an enterprise implementation of password managers, it's usually the same password they're using to sign into their other work systems. So you need to still encourage users to make that password as strong as possible. Um, we talked last time about making that password longer, um, but 
in the vein of password use, there's also another thing we have to consider, which is to make sure that that password itself is not reused from other systems. Uh, and that's where you want to implement a tool like SpedCop's password policy, uh, where we provide the extensive list of passwords from public data breaches. Uh, we give you ways to also block your own kind of custom base words. We call it a custom dictionary. So um, I work at Spec Ops. Any variation of the word Spec Ops should not be in my password or anyone's password that works here. And I can guarantee it's not using that tool. Uh, it's going to make it very difficult for an attacker to get in um, if we take away some of those you know, low-hanging fruit, like just we're using a password they've already seen or using a password that is very easy to guess because it uses one of those common base words. So, you know, speaking of that tool, so how, how would an organization use SpecOps password policy? Can you maybe explore that just a little bit for us? Yeah, so uh, password policy, it, it plugs right into your Windows Active Directory domain controllers. It sits in that system that's already handling all of your authentication and your passwords. Uh, and once it's in place, anytime a password gets changed, uh, we can make sure that it does not contain some of those common base words. We can make sure that when the password changes, the user's not reusing their own password just by doing the same thing with a different number at the end, like users love to do. Uh, we can also check against those lists of breached passwords that we could provide. So if the user goes to set their password, and it's a password we've seen before, the user will see a message that says you cannot use a password that has appeared in a data breach or something of that effect. Um, so that's all, you know, that all plugs in. We can even go back and look at existing passwords. So as new breaches come out, we don't have to force a password change. We can go back and say, okay, we have new data. You put that new data in your environment and you run a scan. You might flag a handful of users that have passwords that all of a sudden are breached. We can force password changes on those users as soon as we know that password is reused they will be forced to change it to something unique. Now, I'm, I'm a visual guy. Is there any way we can get a, a, a demo of SpecOps password policy to show folks at home what it looks like? Absolutely. Let's get the screen share going, and we'll show you what it looks like. Awesome. All right. So we'll just give a quick peek at the admin interface, and then we'll show you what it looks like for an end user. Um, there's a lot of bells and whistles in here. Um, under the hood, again, this is all plugged into your Active Directory environment. Um, but it's all uh, user, uh, basically a graphic interface we can use to set some of these advanced rules. It's very simple. Uh, so I mentioned things like blocking users from changing the password to the same thing with a different number at the end. That's a tick box in this tool once you have it installed and set up. Um, talk about those common base words, a custom dictionary. Um, so here you can create a, these lists can be as extensive as you like. Uh, but they're very simple. I mean, you know, I put my company in here. I put the blog in here. I put a few others in. Uh, but these are those common words for my organization that I want to keep out of passwords. You can come up with this list yourself. You can plug it in here. Uh, and we'll even find variations on these words. So any uppercase, lowercase variation um, will still be detected. Elite speed, character substitution, uh, normalization, whatever you might want to call that. But you know, you know what that is, P plugging in a zero for an O or an at for an A. All of that is detected automatically as well. So as users try to reuse these common ideas, those passwords get blocked before they even get set. Um, when we talk about breach password protection, it's a tick box at the end of the day. Um, you know, the list is downloaded, it sits locally in your environment. And when the user goes to change a password, we find something on the list, that password gets stopped. We're going to keep checking daily to make sure no current passwords are on that list. And again, we can force another password change, kick off an email notification if we find something like that. So an end user, an IT admin, if you want to CC a manager, whoever, everyone can be informed as to what we found, why we're forcing a password change. Um, we don't like making users change their passwords, and certainly users don't like it, but um, it's well communicated. It's uh, as to as we could possibly make it. And at the end of the day, we're we're solving an important security problem here by flagging those passwords. Um, even as an end user, they're going to see that if you have it, um, a desktop client that we provide, if you roll that out, we can even tell the user as they're changing the password. Here are the rules you must meet. Enter that new password. If that was something from a data breach, and that one was, 
straight away, that was a breach password. You are not allowed to use it. If it's a, one of those common base words, we can even call that out separately, say, hey, you cannot use the word spec ops in your password. Um, so the end user sees that information. The administrator can see that the password was rejected and why. Um, so everyone can be on the same page as to what, what is happening with passwords. And you can see in real time that we are enforcing these rules, that we are preventing users from reusing these kinds of passwords that are going to be much easier for, uh, for a bad actor to, uh, to guess. Well, Darren, this was great. Uh, a great demo. I know that's something I need to start, uh, you know, looking into more and doing myself. Uh, you know, as folks watch the video and they want to learn more, where's the best place they can go to uh, to do that? Just head to our website, uh, specopssoft.com. Um, you'll be able to see all sorts of information about our products. And if you're interested in hearing more than that, there's a contact form right on the page that you can fill out to uh, to learn more. Great. Well, thanks again for joining VM Blog and providing us this info. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks again. All right. Take care. All right, you too.